mañana. Yo creo que estoy a la par de Jorge en la calidad de los presentadores, así que vengo bien. Eh, me gustaría invitar a pasar a Talía Mares y a Lee Hetherington de Facebook, que nos van a hablar de Disaster Recovery at the Edge. Entiendo que ellos van a presentar en inglés por si alguno precisa el, el aparatito. Hello. Okay. Um, hi. Good morning. Um, first of all, thank you very much for your time today and for the opportunity of talking uh, during LACNOC. Um, we are Lee Hetherington from the Edge team and Dalia Mares also from the Edge team at Facebook. Yeah, unfortunately, this uh, talk's going to be in English. I'm sorry. The only um, Spanish I actually know is um, how to order some beers. I can say dos cervezas, por favor. Um, <laughs> other than this, I'm done. Um, so we'll do this in English. Um, well, today we'll talk about network disaster recovery. Um, the importance of being prepared for major disasters and that it could, could impact people's experience. You will learn about our efforts and understanding how our own infrastructure will react in these disasters and also how important it is working with you, internet service providers, um, on these efforts. Well, first, let's talk about Facebook. Facebook is multiple types of products. As you know, Messenger, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp is our family of applications. Facebook is also it to scale. Designing systems that are used by billions of people creates a very diverse set of research, challenge, uh, research challenges, whether it's supporting our 2.62 billion monthly users or supporting or handling hundreds of millions of photo uploads per day. So far we have 300 million. Or storing and efficiently accessing the data for millions of pieces of content added per minute. These challenges are massively important and they require equally innovating solutions. So at this scale, Lee, what happens when things fail? Well, that's an interesting question. So this obviously is the worst case scenario for us. Um, Facebook's down, you can't get to Facebook anymore. Um, and of course, we have emoticons for this too. So more interestingly, this depicts an actual real world failure of when we fail traffic out of a region. So this was a region where we have a small amount of infrastructure. As you can see here, the, the milliseconds round trip time from our pop to the user is generally under 50 milliseconds. And as you can see, during the, the failure time, we failed and we moved up to somewhere around 200 milliseconds. Um, obviously, this is not really very acceptable. And similarly, when we have pop outages, things take time to recover. These two lines depict two different types of traffic coming from our edge infrastructure. And as you can see, this dip, which has multiple hours of egress impact, and so impact to our users. So we had a wake-up call back in 2012 when Hurricane Sandy came. Um, it was within 30 miles of one of our data center regions in Ashburn. We have redundancy in our data center regions. We have, at the time, five regions. Today we have 12. We continue to build more. Um, each region is huge. We have hundreds of thousands of machines running thousands of software applications and different software systems. And so we asked ourselves, what would actually happen if Ashburn had been hit? So what happens when there's a significant outage? What happens if we were to lose a data center? And that, that's something that we can't stop. Um, we have great engineers. Unfortunately, those engineers today can't stop hurricanes. 
as much as we would like. All we can do is detect and mitigate these kind of things. And so here we were wondering how to keep Facebook up despite losing a region. What would actually happen? Our answer was the Storm Initiative, a new project where we would look at engineering efforts, large-scale tests, and we worked with a number of different teams across the organization to plan for a disaster. It's one thing for us to prepare, but another thing to actually take down a region. And so we asked ourselves, can we run Facebook without one of these regions? And like I said earlier, each of these regions is massive. We have thousands of servers running thousands of applications, drawing enough power to power a small city. We wondered, can we quickly move users out of a failed region to another region? Do we have enough capacity in that region on both the servers and on the network? These questions appear simple, but it actually turns out at this kind of scale, these are really not easy things to answer. And so a quick show of hands for you. How many of you have been involved in a hurricane or have experienced a hurricane? Like two hands, three hands. Um, how many of you have come across bugs in code? Hmm, more hands. And so if you think about this, remove the hurricane aspect of this, similar issues happen with bugs in code. Um, all similar kind of things. And so after almost two, almost two years of work, we came up with a large first disaster recovery test against one of our data center regions. We called this Sandstorm. And this was against our Ashburn data center region, which was initially affected by Sandy. And so after many months of testing, planning, um, Jay, who's our head of global engineering, was having a conversation with our former CFO about, hey, you've done this, all this great work. Fantastic, the infra teams have done a really great job. You're not really going to go into an Ashburn off, are you? And of course, Jay, without even thinking, said, of course we are. You know, we've done all this testing. The only way we can actually prove this is by turning something off. And so we learned a lot from Sandstorm. We learned that actually our main monitoring system relied on the Ashburn facility. We take that away, we're now sailing blind. But ultimately, the test was a success. None of our users noticed. More importantly, we weren't in the press for having a huge outage. And so now, fast forward to October 2016, we decreased our notice period down to two days. So Jay, again, has a, now has a dice with the names of all of our DC regions on them, rolls the dice and gives the teams two days notice to perform a storm. And so moving forward across 2015 and 2016, we had a number of different storms, um, which went all the way across our family of apps, so Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, against our IT infrastructure and also against all of our data infrastructure. Every major part of the company was tested throughout this. And so what's next? We're here today to talk about edge. And that's what we're working on next. As you'd imagine, we have a very complex edge infrastructure ranging from caches deployed inside networks like yours to all of our pops across the world, delivering content to our billions of users across the entire family of apps and across the globe. And of course, failures do happen, especially when we consider this as ultimately the internet. And so our main, our main goal here is to minimize impact to people. We want to minimize the impact of people using the Facebook platform. And so we do this with automation. We have a number of different tiers. So we have a global controller. This is a piece of software which determines which pop the user will be served from. It deals with moving traffic at the global level, as you'd imagine most CDNs do. Linked to this, we also have a local controller. Now this controller deals with making sure links inside a particular pop or a particular metro don't become overloaded. Um, we do fine-grained traffic engineering, essentially, to move traffic around. Um, we've done a number of talks on this in the past. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions after. And so ultimately, we're here to mitigate. As I said earlier, we can't stop these failures from happening. All we can do is detect them and mitigate them. And so essentially under failure conditions, what we're looking here is steering. Um, we look, we've made very, a large number of improvements in our software. So this global controller has gone from being a manual process to failing traffic from one pop to another, to taking hours, to taking minutes. Um, you know, we're looking to go beyond that. Working with resilience with all of you in the room is really how we improve things under failure conditions. Um, we'd really like to build you know, multiple, multiple ways to egress. So Talia, what are we doing today? So, so far, we have doing 
Um, we are working already with ISPs in many regions. Uh, we are draining traffic. We are uh, doing off-peak. Um, we are analyzing real data from our systems after the drainings. We are looking how long things uh, get to recover and in which issues uh, this cause. We have done, um, basically, what is a peer drain test that I have just mentioned? It's basically when we decrease capacity with a peer. What well, we test, we test resilience. Uh, working, that, and that's what's very important to work with you, you know, to drain the peer slowly and not create that many issues and be able to test. What we test, we test functionality. First of all, uh, not big levels. And then we monitor. We monitor all the outcomes so we can learn from them and improve. What have been the outcomes so far? So far, we have improved our tooling and automation. We have also um, have solved many connectivity issues, like for example, um, missing prefixes or misconfigured MTUs or issues with traffic engineering. We have um, learned more about real problems, and our main focus is not um, have user performance, not have issues with user performance. So which are the next steps? The next steps are working with you to do these tests jointly. You know, do these peer draining tests together. Soon, no, we will not only plan to do this, do this peer drain test in single ports. We will look to do it on the pop or in the caches. We will continue tooling and doing the automation, our automation efforts. As I, as I said, we are going to do these train tests also on the pops and the caches. And not only off peak, we can do also uh, during peak hours. Uh, work with you. So this is a call for help. Um, we'd really like to work with all of you. Um, as we said, we're gonna test this stuff. Um, We'd really like to work with you to minimize the impact to our mutual users, ultimately. We have various ways of controlling traffic. We're uh, testing at the moment BGP communities so that you as the ISPs can control under failure scenarios or even under normal um, routing, um, working to move traffic bet either between caches or between pops. Um, these BGP communities essentially teach our controllers what to do. Um, Whilst we use BGP, because we connect with all of you using BGP, um, it, do, it doesn't really take all of the decision-making process. The controllers really are telling the network what to do. So far, as we see four main methods of egress, um, and the, the ideal design is to lose any one of these elements, and of course, without impact to people. So our first uh, method of egress is caching. We all, we, as you know, we have our own caching solution. Uh, this is available for qualifying networks. It offloads most of the traffic, which, which we consider static content. Uh, briefly, you know, I will explain, we have two types of content, dynamic and static. Static is the one that compromises um, videos and images, and is the one that is more, the one that creates a more heavy content. Um, so that's what we offload uh, using the caches. Um, this can provide offload uh, in really peaks because these are kind of services that can generate really peaks of traffic, so it will, it helps a lot on that. And also helps to build uh, resilient um, networks. Like for example, some services that can really create peaks of traffic is live streaming that is supported on, a, on our caching solution and the safety checks when a disaster occurs. These are solutions that are very important for people to communicate and tell their loved ones that they're okay. And so the second method is really peering. So we have a number of POPs around the world. We're connected to many IXs around the world. Um, we offer PNIs to qualify networks on 10G or 100 interfaces. Um, really important to us though is you must maintain a peering DB record. Um, as we've already talked about, we have a plethora of automation. Peering is one of those things. Um, we really drive our network configurations from 
the peer and DB information. So it's very important. Our third means of vehicle is regional peering. If we overlap in multiple locations, the ideal scenario is to peer in those locations. Also, we expect consistency of prefixes along these the multiple peering locations. Our, route, our routing is based on latency, so basically our system will pick first the closest location and we use the other location as a backup in case of an outage. Um, and basically, speak to us about traffic engineering, like we support some BGP communities for signaling. Um, there are some things that we don't support, so talk to us. We are uh, free to answer any question. And of course, the fourth method to appeal to all the transit providers in the room. Um, of course, if we don't peer with you, we use transit. Similarly, under failure scenarios, we also use transit. If a P&I either fails or becomes overloaded, we may spill um, small or even large amounts of traffic over to, over to the transit provider. Um, we do aim to deliver the traffic from the pop that's at the closest point of interconnection with your transit provider. Um, obviously, transit is transit. And so in summary, we are obviously really interested in building resilient connectivity with you. We're really interested in reducing costs. We'd like to keep this traffic on caches and PNIs and peering as much as possible. Um, we don't like ourselves unexpected events, you know, shifting traffic around the world. Um, we want to test it. We want to find and we want to fix issues with you. So if you have any questions, talk to the team. There are a number of our team here. Um, we all talk very frequently. We're all at many of these types of events around the world. Thank you. Any questions? Tenemos minutos para preguntas. Si alguien quiere preguntar, recuerden que pueden preguntar en cualquier idioma y recuerden presentarse en, eh, en el micrófono si es que van a preguntar. Russell. Hello. Uh, Russell Bean, Cable and Wireless. Um, I see you've done a lot of work on natural disasters <clears throat> and things like that could go wrong. What about more malicious or deliberate intents to take things down? What kind of work have you done around that? And maybe even like layer eight issues that are accidental disasters? Um, I think layer eight kind of problems between keyboard and chair. Um, we have lots of those, same as everyone, anybody else. And, and we kind of see those as the same kind of events. And part of this DR process that we're going through is actually learning some real world events. So ignore all of the hurricanes and wildfires and all these kind of cool things. Actual somebody making a configuration error, a pop going down because of a fiber cut, all of these kind of things are things that we're building automation for so that we can learn. You know, we, what we would really love to be able to do is, you know, rewind time, press play and watch what happened and then learn from that so we can teach our software systems to kind of adapt to those things. Okay, and um, one other comment, um, the ticketing system uses your caches, so if it's down, how do we open a ticket? The ticketing system um, also uses the main pop infrastructure, so if your caches go away, you'll be fine. All right. Thank you. Alguna pregunta más adicional? I, I do have a question. <laughs> um, how was your, your specific experience with Hurricane Sandy, for example? How did that work? Um, the same as any other type of event. Obviously, this one, this caught us off, off guard. This is not kind of something that we had been running this great two-year program for, and then suddenly this hurricane came. And it's like, great, we've got all these plans. It's going to be fine. This was the thing that kind of really spurred us to look at this in real great detail. Um, we have a good amount of resilience in our systems. Losing a data center region is not something that's going to impact your, your experience as a platform. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we have one question for all of you. Um, actually, we have, you may be aware of our Oculus product, the virtual reality. We actually have an Oculus Go to give away. Um, so we have one question for all of you. Um, if somebody can tell us what the name of our first data center storm was, uh, we have an Oculus to give away. Be quick. No, no sé si se entendió eso. Eh, los que sepan el nombre, es, una, es un desafío y hay un regalo. Los que sepan el nombre del primer data center, 
First data center that uh, first storm. Maybe. Oh, el nombre de la primera tormenta que afectó un data center de Facebook. Hay un regalo, unos Oculus. Vayan al, al micrófono. The name of the storm, ah. not the hurricane. Uh -huh. ah. El nombre del Sorry. proyecto. No, nombre del proyecto, no de, del hurricane. Oh. Vieron ah. un montón de nombres. ¿Cuál es el primero? En el micrófono. Micrófono. Vengan al micrófono. El gentleman. Was in this sandstorm? Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.